Good morning, and welcome to St. Andrews. We'd like to inform you of the adjust, <coughs> excuse me, of the adjustments we are making for our celebration of the Mass to maximize safety during this time of public health concern. First seating, we ask that everyone please maintain social distancing by leaving every other pew empty, those taped off, and by spreading ourselves out one person or a couple per kneeler. For families with more than two people, we advise an additional kneeler space between them and the next person in the pew. Reminder, handicap rows are only for the handicapped. Second, singing. There will be no singing at daily mass until further notice. No opening or closing hymn. We ask of your, for your understanding and cooperation with this. Third, communion. We ask everyone to maintain social distancing of at least six feet while in the communion line, since there will only be one priest each on the east and south aisles distributing communion, it is su suggested that people try to distribute themselves equally both these for these sections to avoid prolonging communion lines. Those wearing gloves should remove their pr them prior to getting in the line and masks should be removed before receiving. Receiving communion in the hand is strongly encouraged. Fourth, departure. We ask that everyone have patience and take their time maintaining social distancing while on your way out. We also strongly recommend against gathering in the parking lot, but encourage everyone to maintain social distancing to your vehicle to head home. Finally, be aware that we are un unable to clean the church between masses. If you have a pre-existing condition, fall into category of higher risk, or yourself work in a higher risk environment, we ask you to consider continuing to view the mass from home and join us in spiritual communion, rather than to put yourself or others at risk of infection. Dispensation from Sunday Mass obligation remains in effect, and your sacrifice is respected. Today is Thursday, May 21st, the sixth week of Easter week. And uh, the intentions of the Mass today are for James Kirk and pre the priest prayer group. Please see that your cell phones are turned off so they don't interfere with the celebration of the Mass. The Antiphon. O God, when you enter forth before your people, marching with them, and live, living among them, the earth trembled, heavens poured down rain, alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, 
forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who made your people partakers in your redemption, grant, we pray, that we may perpetually render thanks for the resurrection of the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. There he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. He went to visit them, and because he practiced the same trade, stayed with them and worked, for they were tent makers by trade. Every Sabbath, he entered into the discussion in the synagogue, attempting to convince both Jews and Greeks. When Silas and Timothy came down from Macedonia, Paul began to occupy himself totally with preaching the word. When they opposed him and reviled him, teaching the word, testifying to the Jews that Christ was Jesus. When they opposed him and reviled him, he shook off his garments and said to them, your blood is on your head. I am clear of responsibility. From now on, I will go to see the Gentiles. So he went there and went to the house belonging to a, na a man named Titus Justus, a worshiper of God. Crispus, the synagogue official, came to believe in the Lord, along with his entire household, and many of the Corinthians who heard believed and were baptized. The word of the Lord. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. Sing to the Lord a new song for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand has won victory for him, his holy arm. Lord has, the Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. The Lord has revealed to the nations his saving power. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Break into song, sing praise. Has revealed to the nations. Alleluia, alleluia. I will not leave you orphans, says the Lord. I will come back to you, and your hearts will rejoice. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, A little while, and you will no longer see me. And again, a little while later, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, What does uh, this mean that uh, he is uh, saying to us? A little while, and you will not see me. And again, a little while, and you will see me. And because I am going to the Father. So they said, What is this little while of which he speaks? 
We do not know what he means. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him. So he said to them, are you discussing with one another what I said? A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me. Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. The Gospel of the Lord. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for coming. I know that uh, we are trying to uh, get back. Um, and uh, before starting our meditation, uh, I just want to say to you that we are approaching this uh, first uh, weekend um, with a regular schedule of masses. Um, just be patient. If there is a virtue that we have to work, is patience during this time. Because with uh, everyone, as individuals, we are taking and uh, um, working with all the information, and we take our decisions in an individual way. So avoid to point out someone wrongdoing or right, uh, saying I, I am right or uh, they are wrong. So uh, please, I'll be begging you your understanding on that. Otherwise, we will continue to create a division in our society and we will continue to create divisions in our communities. If we have to shake, not shake, word, not word, and all the rest of things. And uh, I have to say to you that we have created a, a kind of uh, mentality that it seems that uh, coming back to church is just like to enter in hell. The simple fact that, that we are coming to receive the, the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. Just be careful on that. Work on that. Okay? Um, you know that uh, it caught my attention, and it's the repetition probably of the verse in the gospel that we have a little while. I am not the first one. The disciples were asking for the meaning of the little while. I'll be trying just to build up on top of what uh, we said a few days ago regarding the transition, transitus, from one reality to the other one. What the Lord is talking about is the transition between his physical presence and now this new reality that we are celebrating in a sacramental way that is not just memorial, do this in memory of me. When we are taking that word in the liturgy, it's not just a reminder of things that happened back 2,000 years ago in our case. We have to be careful on that. It is not just like what I did mention to you when we lose a person by death or by departure. I was telling you on, uh, on Monday that uh, we have the memory and we cling in every single word and uh, expressions and uh, we have the memory of our lost ones. It is true, that happened, that is the reality of our faith, is based on uh, historical events. 
Meaning Jesus Christ, his life, his preaching, his miracles, they were not a fiction. They took place in a space and in time. And the fact that uh, the liturgy is inviting us to do the memorial is not just a simple memorial as we do with individual human beings. Because he came back to life. That is the full power of uh, these 40 days that uh, today we, uh, uh, you know that in many dioceses, uh, the church is celebrating 40 days after the ascension of the Lord, meaning not any more physical presence of the Lord. But during the 40 days, the Lord was sharing, partaking, inviting, teaching. The meaning of the transition of the reality of the one who had been sent by the Father, he is finishing his work he is placing us back where we belonged, to the right hand of the Father. And now he is inviting us to just do that little while, which means for us our faith. For many of us, that little while came by the faith we had received in baptism. Meaning we don't realize, maybe, uh, the, the power that means for you and me to have open eyes and to see the divinity what uh, others, uh, they, uh, they cannot see or that they reject. So my faith allows me to be in touch with and to make actual the presence of the divinity, it doesn't matter what. The divinity is not tied to the physical presence. He can do whatever he wants. So, and the little why for us, it signifies the starting of the vision of the divinity that is the promise in full in heaven. In the mid-time, so far we are pilgrims, in transition to the final realities of eternity, we can take advantage of this little while. And how wonderful it is for us to realize with uh, no doubt that when we receive the absolution, is God, is Jesus Christ giving us the absolution. That when the priest is pronouncing the words, is Jesus Christ being present. That when I listen the word of the Lord, it comes to me fresh by the lips of Jesus himself. That is the little while for me. The baptism allows us to me just to have open eyes, open ears, to listen, to recognize. My ships will recognize my voice. I know them by name. It is true that we have to force ourselves because we, we don't see the physical presence. A little while and you will see me no more. But we are coming even though for some one of you, or including myself, is a risky decision to overcome the, 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 the risk that we are taking with the pandemic. But we are being forced by this little while because we won't be with him. And we know for sure that that is not physical presence. Is vision? Yes. It has more certitude than the vision of my eyes? Yes.
So enjoy your life. Enjoy the presence of uh, the Lord in the last verse uh, that uh, we have for the psalm today. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord. All you lands, break into songs. Sing praise. God bless. Keeping our eyes fixed on the promises of salvation, we bring our petitions to our merciful Father. For all bishops, priests, deacons, may God continue to sanctify and purify them in their sacred ministry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in positions of political power, May the grace of God enable them to truly see the needs of those whom they serve. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are struggling in their faith, may God look graciously upon them and the Holy Spirit help them grow in truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us gathered here through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, May we faithfully live the truth of the gospel in all our actions and interactions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead and the souls of all the faithfully departed, especially for the intentions of this Mass, James Kirk, and the pr priest prayer group, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pause and add our own intentions and those in the prayer intention book. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of joy, hear our prayers today. We ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love, 
through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to love you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <coughs> You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of, his, of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and, all, and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, 
be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Frank, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather through yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestowed on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and format by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us, he say, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, o Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be Communion Antiphon, behold, I am with you always, even to the ends of the age. Alleluia.
Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, as is ended, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Peaceful day.